Here we go. We're live. Review number 20 summer. <laughs> Maybe three even. I don't know. Lost track. Lost count. But as I'm always, I'm joined by my good friend, Christoph, over at Ale Degastation. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Witam wszystkich w następnej Ale Degustacji. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah just nod just nod we are taking a look at two beers from some people hate them some people think well, right. well drinking think, <laughs> yes and we have very stylish bottles yes and to add to them you know a very peculiar style clear yes yeah my my only gripe with it with a brewery of that size but yeah i don't know uh, but yeah it's the, it's the abbott ale and the abbott reserve um five percent and 6.5 um yeah pretty much any supermarket really stock these beers on that usual four for six pound deal um i think i've had abbott ale in a can before in the past i'm not too sure i don't think i've had the reserve before have you i think i've got uh, both uh, but not together yeah so um yeah we'll uh we'll we'll crack open the abbot ale first i think um sh should we just both open them at the same time and do that um you know what we'll just do the first one uh, a little bit you know quickly and then open the uh, second yeah. one and then we will we'll do yeah. be like uh, doing them together, you know, side by side. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, yeah, we'll crack this one open then. Yeah. Usual Richard drinking Malt. crown. Pale and amber malts join with a blend of Challenger, First Gold, and Fuggles hops to deliver a complex, satisfying, and mature ale. So, all English hops. Nice. Uh, so I think they, they, they're trying to say that it, it is a, a really English or British ale. You know what? I think I've lost uh, lost uh, my opener somewhere. Yeah, but I'm prepared. My key opener, right? Cool slide. Cool. Yep. Right. So cup, like you see, Brewers logo, and the same on the other bottle. Oh, miles ahead of you, man. I've already poured it. Come on. <laughs> it's okay. I was trying to find out some some aroma, but I, you know what? Oh, There's no aroma oh, from I'll just smell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, actually, it's unusual. It's much more from, from the it's glass. You know what? It is nice, nice fruity. Yeah, it's not offensive, is it, on the nose? You know what? I like it. It's fruity. Um, yeah, fruity. So, so Some um, burn crust. I'm not, I'm not picking up any stunkiness from it anyway. No, 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 no. And, and you know why? Because uh, they're using um, hop extracts. So there's no... Um, room for skunkiness <laughs> they are clever <laughs> mm. yeah i mean yeah it, it smells it smells all right on the nose i yeah, can't really sort it's of it's quite delicate um, aroma but pretty nice let's have a try mm. cheers na zdrowie
I'll get that fruit cake. You know what? It's it's rather light body, uh, rather dry, but you have some aroma here. You have some taste. Well, it, it's not the you know the worst possible. It's rich. And you have bitterness as well. Good. It, it's rich, but at the same time, it's light. Yes. Uh huh. So aroma is quite nice and rich, and um, a little bit sweetness in, in aroma. But beer itself, it's rather dry, uh, light. Uh, with uh, maybe because it's light and um, and dry, the bitterness is exposed a little bit better. I don't mind that. Yeah, I don't mind that at all, actually. I mean, it's... well, th there's no masses of fru fruit cake, but uh, some, yes. Yeah, you, I do. I do get. I do get the fruit cake thing in it, um, and it, it does hang around quite a bit. It's not. A, it's not fleeting in any way. Um, even though the body on it, um, for me, it's sort of like it's. It's a bit of a weird one. It's. It's. it's like I said, it's, it's got that richness to it. But at the same time, it's there's a, like a little bit of thinness in there as well. But then flavors do like they don't disappear. They they hang around quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, very quickly. Yes, definitely. But bitterness stays. Uh, stays. It's low, but because uh, low body and dryness, it seems to be you know the exposed and uh, you know it's getting. Better than, than you know, uh, than it would be in a rich uh, malt mm. beer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a nice breadiness to it in there as but well. You know what? Actually, it, it tastes like a quite sessionable beer. Yeah, I get that. Five percent. Definitely, I definitely pick this over the blooming drinking yeah. IPA. Mm. Yeah, it's it's all right. I, I I I don't mind it. Yeah, you know what? It, it, it's it's okay. It. It's okay for for uh, any uh, outdoor uh, outdoor uh, activities uh, when you don't need to <clears throat> think about the beer, just to have something to drink. It's okay. Um, mm. It has a you know drinkability factor as well. Yeah, if I if I went to a Green King pub, um, this this would be one of the ones that I'd go to out of, out of their beers that they have on there. depending on what's on at the time but I, I don't mind it yeah i don't mind this well it's not very offensive mm. but you know it's what it's easy drinking stuff yes uh but also it's a little bit empty you have those flavors but they are like disappearing very quickly and then you, you are ending up with a little bit of bitterness and and nothing. So me that 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 fruit cake sort of intake that that's lingering in my palate. It it doesn't wash away that quick for me. Um. And 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 that vague bitterness in there as well. It's. It's around there still. It's it's still hanging around. It's not pungent or anything like that. No. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's just it's just one of them. 
It's quite easy to make in plain. Yes. Yeah. 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 Without without sort of like dissing it. It's just a, it's just a simple beer. It's it's not it's not mind blowing and it's not it's not no, crap. Well, definitely not. Uh, right. So let's let's open a, another bottle. About reserve, much stronger, six point five. Uh, distinctive, full-bodied, smooth and mature beer. Bursting with fruit cake and toffee flavors. Okay, so we have much more coffee. Is a uh, toffee here? <laughs> okay, treat for special occasions. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. The same, exactly the same town. Typical for Green King. Mm -hmm. <sighs> hmm, a little bit, uh, I think, a little bit more aroma. Ah, definitely richer. Yeah. Uh, better aroma from it. Uh, color wise, actually, it's more or less the same. A little bit darker, maybe. A, sh a shade. There's not a lot in it, is there, color wise? But in aroma, uh, you can find a little bit of more alcohol, actually. I just get. You know what? I, I think it's in plus. Uh, it adds a little bit uh, to the richness of uh, you know those fruitiness and uh, and cake and everything else. Uh, mm. It's like a, another layer. But yeah, you you can smell alcohol actually. Mm. The foam in both cases it's uh, quite limited. But we can say that both bubbles are tiny. Yeah. You know what, what they say? Smaller bubbles, better beer. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's well, what this one's all about. Then. If you add uh, nitro, it will be you know great beer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Ar aroma is quite nice. I like it. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It's, yeah, it's, it's a it's a little bit more the ramped up version of of that one. And um, you know what? It it smells a little bit a little bit like um, stronger beers, fruitier. Um, it smells like. Um, ESB? Do you think so? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Like a strong, mm. strong bitter. Yeah. Well, I like it anyway. Let's go for it. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Much better mouthfeel. It is full. It is smooth, uh, velvety, delicate, uh, enjoyable. This one, yeah. Just have another sip of that other one. You will be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because when you do something like this, it doesn't matter what beer it is, it, whether it be a craft beer or yeah, or a, a real ale. Um, 
the difference when you when you do it like this the difference is just bloody worlds apart isn't it <laughs> yeah and it it have to be side by side because uh if it's like you know in the space of time it was like okay it's it's very similar mm -hmm. yes but if you will take them together it's a, like a huge gap yeah yeah definitely you said the, the, the mouth on the thing. It, it tastes mm -hmm. like um weak bitter and about reserve tastes like a extra special bitter a good a good a good english strong ale. yeah oh um, yes yes uh-huh that body that body the, the body in this reserve carries them flavors on a little bit more as well doesn't it you know what it is a um tex texture difference it's smooth and velvety mm. and uh, has some some residual uh, maltiness sweetness uh yeah it's it's pretty nice and when you compare with the you know <sighs> this one you can hardly yeah, say that, that it's the same beer <laughs> mm. i i I didn't I didn't mind going going into it the the abbot I, I was sort of like yeah this this ain't too bad but now it's yeah it's it's my opinions changed completely on it now the reserve <laughs> for me is uh a damn sight better oh yes a whole lot better. Uh, it's nice uh it's soft uh very enjoyable very drinkable uh well i think it, it's um beer that, like it should be <laughs> in the first place yeah you have a little bit of high alcohols mm -hmm. but it's okay it adds a little bit of character um to this beer yeah considering only 1.5 percent more it it definitely um i mean i'm not i'm not getting i'm not i'm not getting a boozy taste no no it. no it's, it's not a very boozy you can smell it a little bit uh, which in mm. reach the uh this uh, aroma mm. just a quick scan at the comments there seems to be a few in there dan travels hey guys dan travels dean quality webcam lol or is that the internet i think it's both to be honest with you <laughs> uh, i've got the best internet here and my camera well it's supposed to be a 1080 but that's a load of cobblers i don't i don't believe that uh valentine hello guys hello i think dean you were not too impressed by us <laughs> certain certain green is i haven't been impressed with um the east coast ipa in nitro i thought that was boring empty um and and their green king ipa not the biggest fan of that as well i think that's a lifeless no. beer um but you know credit where credit's due i think um i'm not the i'm not the most um biggest fan of of, of this brewery as a whole but i think that abbott reserve it's all right yeah it's all right yeah. that is so, um lots of, lots of beers from from green king it's like um overstatement on the label you have ipa and it's barely a uh, golden nail there mm. you know what i oh, did oh, a beer from green king yeah. um oh probably uh two year two years ago let's say two years and it was called the suffolk springer which was an english strong ale mm -hmm. and i really really enjoyed that and this this abbott reserve reminds me a little bit of that with that that sort of um uh fruitcake vibe to it um whether that was a one-off beer that they did i don't know but i did it a while back and yeah it, it does remind me a little bit of that the mouthfeel and, and the, the flavors that are coming from it yeah you know what 
the uh, Abbott Reserve um, tastes like a proper uh, British beer, right? With flavors, uh, it, it, it's nice. You you can mm. you can easily say it is a British beer, right? Because yeah. of yeah. the um, hops used, because of the maltiness uh, type, because of a little bit of caramel there. Yes, it's very British. Mm. Abbott Ale, it's like stripped version. It's quite dry, so you don't have this um, nice maltiness here. You just end up with um, nice aroma and some uh, watered bitter. Because even bitters are a little bit better. Because mm -hmm. you, you have this um, nice, what I don't like really, um, uh, caramel base, right? Because the, almost everyone in Britain uses a crystal malt, so it's lots of caramel in it. Yeah. Uh, so yes, you can you can see the you know the British foundations in it, but here it's quite dry. You know what? I've just I've just thought that this beer, it's closer to brute IPA than what what we've tried <laughs> from supermarket oh, because it, it was a bit dry. <laughs> this one is dry um i guess you guys are preparing for christmas eve ceremony and oh, you yes. are ah Repenting your sins by drinking bad beer. No, no, it's not like this. We are trying I've to had... show everybody that we are normal people. And we will review everything what the normal people drink. And the normal people drink drinking. All like my... um brother-in-law drinks Holstein and thinks it's the best beer in the world. Well, for him, maybe. No, I mean... position to tell him that it's not. Uh, he saw my review and said, oh, no, it doesn't taste like like uh, uh, blood and, um, and uh, nails and anything else. For him, it's the best beer in the world. So, okay. Yeah, no I mean, that, 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 that's fair enough, you know. Um, everybody, everybody, each to, each to your own uh, is, is, is my sort of ethos on it. Um, um, I, I think, my, my, you know, comparing these two beers, my, my personal favourite is the is the Reserve, yeah, hands definitely. down. Um. But that, that's not to say that there's people out there that think the Abbott Ale is more acceptable or they prefer it more. Um, fair dues. I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, it you doesn't know make what, no odds to me. Think, what What you think? I think the um, sales uh, saying everything. People are buying those beers, so they like it. Mm. Definitely. So we are not here to tell everybody that oh no don't, don't drink this beer uh, they are not <laughs> not acceptable no everyone has a different taste if you like it enjoy it I think that's the best That's what it's about. possible yeah. uh, message that we can say if you enjoy the beer enjoy it fully doesn't matter what yeah, beer it I is. Mean they're both they're both acceptable beers and if if i like i said earlier if i ended up in a in a green king pub um you know what it would probably taste much better from the pump 
Yeah, I bet. I bet that. I, I don't know if they. Well, I'm guessing they do. They do the Abbott Reserve on cask. That would be a fantastic pint. Probably the yeah. Abbott. The Abbott bog standard Abbott. That'd probably be half decent on cask as well. And I just keep go. I keep going back to this now. Th this is sort of like, yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> And on the start, it was acceptable. <laughs> yes. The, the 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 hypocrisy of beer, I'm afraid. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. I mean, talking of, talking of Christmas beers, anyway, uh, Alinton, if you're still there, mate. Um. Our next review is going to be something special, indeed, and it's oh. not going to be. Uh, macro beers at all it, we've, we've got some fantastic um, American and uh, English craft beers um, that we're going to be um, losing ourselves in yes <laughs> four it's strong, it's strong it's beers challenging yes yes very challenging um, I think they're basically all imperial stats aren't they yes <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what so, uh, we've done um, huge mistakes uh, we should go straight away to barley wines they're even stronger yeah we did look at a couple of barley wines as well didn't we when we were browsing yeah. for beers to, to get yeah but anyway we've, we've ended up with four imperial stouts um so yeah we'll we'll do yeah do i think they are for uh, for Christmas, you can sit with them, uh, enjoy, especially when yeah. you, when you have a, a real mm, fireplace. Uh, so yeah, you you, you can uh, listen. Kids uh, singing carols. Uh, well, kids don't sing carols anymore. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll try and make it as Christmassy as we can. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be it'll be slightly longer than our usual reviews as well because we're just gonna just chill out really and and relax and and then leave the camera rolling and just just drink the beers and and, and chat and stuff so yeah it'll be it'd be like, like last year's one we 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 kept that going for quite a few hours didn't we i think in the end oh yeah <laughs> yeah from what i can remember but uh yeah i'll just have a quick scout on the comments and then we'll have our final thoughts and i can't because my phone's just died and i can't see the comments <laughs> me and technology not really the best of friends well uh, technology is still limited so let's see Life now limited. Any comments? Um, I never has an imperial stout. Can you recommend a good one? Hmm, this would be very difficult. An, e an easy to get hold of imperial stout, I'd say, if, you, if you've got a way trying you, is the Fuller's imperial stout. Um, well, that's top stout, draw. you really need to try different ones because uh, they are very rich, very heavy, mm. and you need to find your own taste. Uh, but anyway, I think I think you should you should if you like heavy, sweet, uh, rich quite um how to say it fruity maybe plummy beers it will be for you and mm -hmm. it depends if you like richer and sweeter versions or more dry maybe you know with different flavors maybe smoked versions or bar aged versions this is very um 
big um oh, yeah. the Guinness, the Guinness, the Guinness for an extra start would be a good shout wouldn't it uh-huh yes I mean, it's not quite imperial, is it? But it's knocking on the door. What is it? Is that eight percent? Not foreign export? Uh, is it eight percent? Nine percent? Can't remember. But yes, you, you have to prepare yourself for a beers that uh, are in the range on 10, 12 percent, fourteen percent, sometimes mm. even more. So they. Mm, if you think about barley wines, it, they can go even further than barley wines in some cases. Uh, but yeah, it, it is a very blurry um, border here. Mm. Yeah, you got. You, I, I can remember the, the very first Imperial Stout that I tried, and, and I just I couldn't get on with it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was it too was, early. You have to, you have yeah, to mature, yeah, yeah. mature your your taste uh, yeah. to get on with the with the such a um, you know uh, how to say it. I, I was I was I was just getting into into experimenting with beers and um, it, it used to watch watch uh, real ale craft beer. I mean, I still do watch him, but um, he was he was reviewing uh, Coco Psycho the first time oh, around. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um he you know, he gave all the spiel to it and everything and it sounded really great. Um I put an order in with Brewdog. Um bottle came, opened it, and he was like, Oh, what's it? This is just booze this is a boozy mess. And it my palate hated it. Um and then so I I, I forgot about Imperial Starts for a while and, and just carried on with pale ales and IPAs. And then I went back to the Imperial Stout with um, a Demolin beer. And again, it was a bit, oh, can't yeah. get on with it. You, you see, I uh, thought it was I, doomed, I, not like Imperial yeah. Stouts, but now I have to be. The problem with them. Imperial Stouts, uh, maybe because uh, I always was drinking um, uh, Baltic Porters, and they are very close, very close yeah. to. Imperial stouts. Some of yeah. them are um well 10, 11, 12 percent. Uh, so you know it is very complex beer. Yeah. So you, you need to be prepared to find those those flavors and enjoy them, right? Uh so actually I would I was like in those beers, you know, from the early age. Uh, because they were very easily available, almost every brewery uh, had a, like a point to have one in um, portfolio, right? So I was trying different ones, and they were different. They were different. One were uh, quite dry. Uh, the other was very. Um, um toasty and burnt you know they were completely different but they were always very strong mm. and dark right uh despite that they were still laggers but technology it's a little bit closer to taste than you think because Taste wise, it's almost the same. If you will take a little bit weaker imperial stout and maybe a little bit richer uh, Baltic Porter, you would have uh, difficulty to find out which one is which. Because, yeah, too, too because it, it, it was designed to imitate imperial stout. Right? With the different mm. different yeast and you know low fermentation technology, so yeah, I had a different different background, and uh, I found out that it's much easier to go through Baltic porters to Imperial Stouts because it, they are very similar. Mm. 
but it's me. Born and bred in two styles that I love. Huh? Two styles that I absolutely love now. Ah, yes, yes, because you learn to 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 uh, like them because they are so rich. The first impression was um, okay. It's it. <laughs> to say it nicely you know what when you um uh, approach a very complex problem you just shut out uh, and uh, you try to deal with the simple things right mm -hmm. and it was too many simple things to deal with right yeah. so like, okay yeah. thank you very much it's not for me but yeah. then yeah. but then you um, developed your skills, developed your taste, and it's bigger for you. I mean, you could you could say exactly the same um, scenario regarding like a Berliner Weiss, the very first time trying one of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think mean, still, still, it's still for every, that style. Yeah, it, I think it's true for every, every extreme beers. Yeah, yeah. There, there, is, there is a time and a place for that beer for me. Occasionally, I will, I will delve into the the realm of beers like that once in a blue moon. Um, just, just to keep it on, you know, keep it different slightly. Um, but yeah, I still, I still, I still respect all beer styles, whether I'm a fan of it or not. You know, every every beer style has its time and its place, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, sometimes you you can find that uh, it is correlated a little bit to um, area where it comes from, uh, time and economical circumstances that those people were and so they were brewing beer what they have yeah that's why you have different different styles really because like um uh, all those um uh, seasons and uh, farm ale they were brewing what, what they have right everything on the on the last last day of, of brewing they had uh, three different uh, style of um, molds okay let's let's brew it beer from what we have what what's left and it was a good beer why not yeah yeah and by doing this they developed a different style why not The sort of this kind of beer is a Polish Mastner beer, uh, very similar to, to Farmhouse. They were just brewing yeah, beer from again, whatever. Else. Yeah, Farmhouse sales. Don't mind them. Didn't really do that many last year. With that hot weather that we had, I, I sort of dug deep into sort of lagers and pilsners. Um, should have explored saisons and stuff like that a little bit more, but but yeah. you know what? There's, there's always there's so beer. many uh, such a beers on the market, really, because mm. everyone uh, makes um, you know New England or <laughs> or West West Coast. Um, yeah. Now everyone have to have to have a brute IPA. Just what's what's selling? That's mm. it. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I can. I can see that that style just fizzing away, though. To be fair, I can't see it like like New England IPAs. They, that that's really gripped people, and and rightly so as well. Um, but that that brute, I think it's just a fad. I, I, I think that'll die off. I do. I can't. Well, you know what? Uh, it is a controversial um, anyway because of the, the using just enzymes. Um, so the. They're making beer like you know, uh, I've been with, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so, so what's a, what's the point in 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 craft world using enzymes? I, I don't know. 
you can have much dry beers without using enzymes. Mm -hmm. Would you would you go would you take another look at another brew IPA again then or? Uh, yes, because I think that's uh, what what I tasted. It wasn't a great example. If I would would I would like to try three or four, uh, and then decide uh, if it would be really truly uh, dry to bone beer with nice flavors. Uh, I mean, the, the nice aromas maybe but it wasn't mm. dry to bone beer and um, that's why i i'm not convinced that it was a you know great example i might i might uh i might take a look at another brute ipa from someone else i'm not going to rush out to do that though no 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 just opportunity yeah if i see one you know if i'm out in a bottle shop and I, I see one from someone else and it's a decent price i may pick it up but yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bend over backwards for, for it because of, of of that that solar wind just crap beer that was that was awful yeah uh, i don't i don't think it was like uh you know fulfilling um description really that's what i read about um brute ipa i didn't found it in this beer that, that's a, that's a problem hmm. but other beers are changing as well i heard that Pliny the Elder, it's much different than it used to be. It's not so harsh. I didn't drink it. Yeah, I've never had the privilege of trying that beer. Yeah, <laughs> but this is what I heard that now it's softer and uh, much um, easier to drink. So like, okay, uh, so why they kept the same name mm. if it's different? Yeah. For me, they, they should uh, add a, a little bit to it, maybe. Whatever. I just don't like when the uh, brewery changing completely a uh, recipe and keep the same name. It's not the same beer. So why? Mm. On the other, uh, other hand, I don't like the breweries they they still brewing the same beer just changing the labels <laughs> that, yeah that happens quite a bit doesn't it yeah especially yeah. when they 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 selling the same beer to uh um different supermarkets it's a different name but it's exactly the same beer or, or, or breweries breweries that eat, that used to have their beer in a 500 ml bottle and have gone down to 330 thorn bridge <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the, the bloody beer is the same price <laughs> yeah but even you know the like, like um uh saddlers uh, they were brewing beers from uh, for aldi uh you know for the craft range and i was like lucky to have an older version and a new version together on one shelf so i've picked them up and like okay you know what this is coffee porter and this is coffee porter mm -hmm. from sanders okay right spill the beans was that the, the, the same abv mm -hmm. description almost the same they they tweaked a few words uh, i'm suspicious <laughs> you know what they were exactly mm. the same different labels different names exactly the same beer what's the price points like though between the two beers the same the same okay because that, that's like the old sort of that theory of um you know kellogg's cornflakes 
and then Tesco's home brand cornflakes. You know, there might be, I don't know, let, let's say 70p difference in a box or whatever. Um, Taste-wise, I don't think there's a lot in it myself. Well, yes, theoretically, Kellogg's is saying that they never made any cereal for any supermarket, right? But I'm not so sure. Maybe it is a slightly mm. different recipe, you know, cheaper one. Uh, mm. But I'm sure that they, they, they making lots of lots of uh, conflicts for different supermarkets. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I mean, go, going back you know a few what? years, what I was, my, I was working my first in job, I worked in a in a poultry pl processing plant. Crap job, awful job, but it was a job, and um, I worked in the the packing end of it, so I didn't get to see the the chickens being being killed or whatnot. But we were in the package, final final sort of, you know, loading the lorries and stuff like that. And in the packing department, all the all the all the chickens were all nicely trussed together, put on the trays and then wrapped, and then they had the stickers put on for the various different supermarkets. Exactly the same bloody chicken. Marks and Spencer's label, seven pounds for the chicken. Asta, three quid, three pound fifty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just uh, the packaging is different. Yeah, I I had I had the same. I was working in um, uh, f food factory as well, uh, so they were packing, you know, like um, rice uh, or you know different things. Uh, e even even biscuits doesn't matter. So for different supermarkets. Of course, they had their own packaging, right? Different grammature and everything, uh, but it was exactly the same product, right? It mm. came exactly from the same uh, bag. <laughs> that I, I loved it from from the uh, from yeah. the uh, you know uh, mm. truck. So it was exactly the same rice, for example, right? But for Selgros was different, for um, their own uh, brand was different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It works yeah, this just, It just goes to show, yeah. Product and placement the and all be, that, Charles. If, they, if the brewery have a nice decent contract with the supermarket they would put anything in the bottles doesn't matter what they just place a nice label okay it's a different beer like uh i don't know if you know but the polish um uh, vanpur brewery they making loads and loads of beers for western uh, supermarkets I think mm -hmm. that three quarters of production goes uh, on export, right? So, as the Morrison, uh, you know what? Uh, if, even uh, Mark and Spencer, they have Van Poel's beers, just labels are different. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's. Um... It's a false economy with things like that, because when when you've like yourself, you've had that experience of, of working in a factory where you've seen you know, you've actually seen the goods, and and the same with me. A chicken's a chicken in my book. It doesn't matter what supermarket's selling it. It's, it's it's a chicken at the end of the day. How you cook it is what you make of it, you know. Um, but that all the all the packaging and stuff it, that's just to to draw you in, isn't it? And, and but, you know, yeah, I suppose some some brewers are guilty of that with their with their visuals on on certain cans. Because I'll put my hands up and admit, I've gone into into craft beer shops before and seen a really glorious looking can, and it stood out at me. And straight away, the yeah, oh, the brewery, like the brewer's got I, I, my I, I, attention. Right. Yeah, 
you know, it, it, well, yeah, nine times out of ten, the beers have been good. But I have had beers before in the past where I've bought it on the, the visual look of the can and the beer's been awful or mediocre, you know. Yeah, nothing special. Yeah, the yeah, label were, yeah. were fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and the market, the marketing side of it is is probably easier. You know, if you're if you're making like mediocre beer and not really putting a lot of um, love into it or skimping on ingredients, but you're putting all your money onto marketing and labelling. You know, uh, you get a few people that will buy the beers and then think, well, oh, no, no, they're, they're rubbish. The, the the cans look good, but the contents is not very good. So we'll catch up with you in the end. But you know what? Uh, there are some uh, breweries. They making awful beer, awful beer, but they don't care. They're going for like festivals, uh, you know, um, uh, like a festive markets, whatever. And they're selling beer, you know, from the top. Uh, it's fine, right? And people are questioning uh, why it's so crazy. Well, that's how it should be. Why it stinks? Well, that's how it should be. It's east, right? <laughs> uh, but they not. Uh, they are not like uh, getting to the same place again. So, whatever. Salt, yeah. great. Uh, the beer itself is just just the shit. Mm. It doesn't matter. They still making more profit, and that's a whole strategy. Yeah, so like, you know, everyone is doing like this. Oh, it's yeah. very rare, but it can happen. <laughs> because mo yeah. most of the small breweries actually very care about the, the product because they are very dependent on selling what, what they brewed. So everything has to be perfect. If something is not perfect, they rather discard it or uh change the completely labels that it's, it's a different beer it's supposed to taste different then make 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 a you know strange moves right uh Darren brewery they had a problem with um very good beer uh it was a diabolus right they put it in a uh in the barrels right they added some uh, yeast. Uh, it's supposed to be funky and a little bit, a little bit um, sour, right? But it wasn't. Yeah. No, it wasn't sour at all. So there was scratching heads. What? What we can do? You know. They added different different strains of uh, yeast, right? No, it still doesn't doesn't go sour. Right. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. Well, it is a different, different beer from different, different year. Right. So they were explaining on on a website. Well, we've tried, we've tried many times to make it like a last one, but it's completely different. So they just added a year. Right, Diabolus two thousand eighteen. It's different. No problem, mm. right? <clears throat> but I must say, it is a very good beer. But completely different than the previous version. Mm. Barrel yeah, aged. Good Barrel aged uh, Russian Imperial Stout. <laughs> With funkiness, oh. mm. lovely. Mm -hmm. You know what? I I think um, yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> temptation from from um, Darren Brewery, and it was the best beer for this. Mm. Is that last year. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Glorious, glorious brewery, Durham Brewery. Hmm. Well, we've uh, we've uh, like <clears throat> drifted a uh, long way yeah. from the Abbott. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. But it's been fun. It's, it's nice to just go off course now and again. It's all beer related, anyway, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the, definitely the winner for me is the Abbott Reserve. Um, yeah, definitely the, the better the better beer out of the two for me. Um, that's not to say that's not awful. It's still drinkable. It's still acceptable, but it just doesn't stand up to the the reserve. There's yeah, a lot more going on for the reserve. When, when you compare both beers. Uh, side by side, right? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it it makes doing doing this side by side thing. It makes the Abbott Ale, which yes, initially I thought it was all right. It just makes it really watery. It's it's strange how that that, that sort of happens when you're doing yeah. this. But it's interesting. It's a nice little messing about experiment with beer that anybody can get hold of really you know nobody's restricted to these sort of beers because every supermarket's doing them um yeah and it's just yeah it's just a, a nice little sort of um play about with a couple of beers nothing yeah, yeah. More, nothing less, guys. It, it makes me curious um about very similar um uh, thing uh when you have um um uh, how it's called um yeah i lost the word now uh from from um Marston's, uh, the hen hen beers oh there the, uh, oh the, yeah not drinking still isn't it i'll speckle down uh-huh Moreland. Who's it? Yeah, it is Marston. Moreland, yeah. Old yeah, Speckle Ken and uh, Reserve. This is the difference as well. And it's from drinking as well. But you know what? It's nice. This, this could this could open open it up uh, every now and you again we could we could do a couple of these versus, Opened, uh, uh, oh yes look i uh, i think we have you know huge range uh, from uh, green king old speckled hen old crafty hen which is oak eight vintage nice nice mm. to, to compare or old golden hand hen and old hoppy hen <laughs> old hoppy hen yeah yeah we could, we could do we could do a couple of them um <laughs> yeah we, what we, else can we stay with green king <laughs> yeah stay with green king green king lawyers <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. but yeah. you know what actually is um uh the vintage beer for, from uh, Actually, it's my wife's favorite. She likes this beer very well. But the heritage stuff. Yeah, old country. Yeah. 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 We could do we could do Colin versus Colin <laughs> Premier. <laughs> well, this is the plan for for the new year. Yeah, we yeah well, we can play about with stuff. I, like I think sure I we think can. we can we can um, uh, rely on our uh, viewers to decide what they would like to compare. Yeah. <laughs> Light beers, golden and hoppy, hands, or a little bit richer. <laughs> uh, old shackled hen and old crafty hen. Oak aged vintage. Okay. Well, you know what? It would be the same percentage because old 
speckled hen have five percent like abbott and old crafty hen has 6.5 like abbott reserve <laughs> this is interesting you know what we can also compare abbott to old um, to hen why not mm, crossover i like it crossover and we could we could even chuck it IPA reserve in the mix, couldn't we? Green King Green King IPA reserve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Green King Green King IPA reserve versus Abbott Ale Reserve versus Old Speckled N. Fucking hell, we could have gone forever, couldn't we? <laughs> well, you know what? Next year uh, it can be something completely different. Why not? Mm. Yeah, we some, yeah, something we, yeah, I'll be up for doing something like that. I haven't have a problem. Well, we're going wild. My only wish is, though, on the final note of this hangout, my only wish is for Santa Claus to bring me decent internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. Yes. I want fiber optic. We, we haven't got fiber optic in our area no it's just you know we can't get it can't cannot get it yet yeah, the building a brand new state literally what three four hundred meters up the road from me they're putting fiber optic in there yet yeah, we can't get it for some strange reason <sighs> so yeah well it's too far there we go well the only the only solution for you it's um satellite internet well, I mean, I, I don't know if you do it on my phone, but I, I'm not too sure how the Hangouts work on my phone. Well, he, because I could, just, I could just run it through my... Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, whatever. Don't, don't, you know, the viewers... Well, maybe... Just it maybe out now, you know? Yeah, uh, we will be in a position to do the... Um, review together in one place who knows that is a possibility as well I, uh, yeah you 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 are on the um beer reviews to meet before you die list and you're one of them <laughs> yeah you know it is a possibility my daughter is uh, applying for reading so it will be close to you hmm. Yeah, that that would be good if uh, if if that can materialise sometime next year, I'd be up for a meet up and some live reviews and whatnot. I'd be up for that. Right, okay. Well, let's uh, cut this video short now. Um, yeah, big thank you to Christoph as always for taking part in this. Um, comparison video of two green king beers um yeah so big big thanks to christoph thank you big very thanks much. to all the people who watched and commented right let's put it and out. our next one when is our next one then um i don't know what's the next date uh well, I think I think it will be after Christmas because my mom is coming, so okay. I will be rather busy. Um, so maybe just after like, Christmas, before before New Year. Before yeah, we'll try we'll try and fit it in then. Um, yeah, we'll we'll try and do that. But they there, there will be decent beers uh, for that um, hangout. I'm hoping so anyway. The price that we paid for them, they should be bloody oh, yeah. good. Definitely. Definitely. Right. Okay. <laughs> See you on the next one, guys. Take it easy. Cheers. Bye bye.